Thank you for keeping with us. I thought we were going to transition to a different panel, but I'm still here and I'm getting another set of a panel. And quite, uh, quite a great, incredible team still right here. And right straight away, let me actually introduce the panel. On my left, I have Mr. Apollo Segawa, the executive director of the Consortium for Enhancing University Responsiveness to Agribusiness Development. He's the chairman, Uganda Agri. Agri Business Incubators Alliance, board member of Uganda Agri Business Alliance and the Food Processing Quality Management System and Agri Business Incubation Expert. Wow, Apple, <laughs> this is an incredibly huge uh, profile. How are you? I'm fine, how are you? Okay, uh, glad to have you. We're going to decipher through this entire uh, set of questions and issues to deal with. And on my right, I have Dr. Margaret Mangeni, Associate Professor in the Department of Extension and Innovation Studies at Makere University, board member of the African Forum for Agricultural Advisory Services, board member of the Uganda Forum for Agricultural Advisory Human Capacity Developer in value chain expert, in value chain, sorry, and an expert in agricultural extension services and a policy analyst. Welcome, Dr. Margaret. Thank you very much. Great. So we've had the, the preamble for all this, in the, this discussion and you've heard what the previous panelists have said. So let me start with you. Mr. Apollo Segawa. One, we, in the declaration for 2040 vision, there are about four declarations that are made in that particular 2040 vision. A high-tech ICT city and associated, associated ICT infrastructure, a globally competitive school skills development center, science and technology parks in each regional city, five regional cities and on and on. So, what's the role of information communication technology and e-commerce in the uplifting, uplifting of our agricultural sector? Thank you very much. Uh, just to go back a little bit on what I do, we really embrace ICT as the, one of the core uh, ways by which uh, we can improve our agriculture productivity. Uh, we work a lot closely with the graduate students. And I may say, in our annual National Agribusiness Innovation Challenge, we have ICT as a major component of that challenge that happens every, every year. Mm -hmm. And what we look at most is, uh, and what we have experienced as far as uh, ICT and agriculture or agribusiness is concerned, is the sharing of information on markets. ICT has a way of sharing information, both cheaply and cost-effectively, across the board you have a means of uh, informing the farmer deep in the rurals about a market and how much that market is willing to pay for a particular product. By harnessing the applications that are being uh, built by our young graduates that have a component of transmitting this information from the markets to the farmers out there, this is a way that can really grow our, our agriculture because the biggest problem that we have with our, our agriculture right now is linking the markets to the producers. The markets, our farmers are very responsive to uh, when the market is there, mm -hmm. but if they don't know that the market is there or how much the market is offering, they are cheated often and they always lose their crop. So, ICT so what, what has are the major implementation practicalities? How does the farmer get to have, or, or who invests in that sort of infrastructure? How mm -hmm. does the farmer get to tap into that infrastructure? Mm -hmm. And how do we move on sustainably to ensure that the ICT is integrated in the agribusiness? Of course, the national backbone, uh, ICT backbone, is a crucial, but the uh, telecom companies have a crucial role to play to make sure that we have coverage in all these areas. What's happening now is the, 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 the applications are there, they've been developed. But they, they can't work everywhere. They can't work deep in uh, the rurals where this information is required. So what we need to have now as government is to make sure that we have coverage across the board so that the farmer deep in Kabira Maido can have access to the information of what the market is like in Kampala. So that and when he's form, selling, specifically exactly, form, yeah. when he's selling his tomatoes, mm -hmm. he's not cheated. He actually gets to get the right price. Same with the coffee, same with all these products that we do. Secondly, uh, ICT has, is an enabler in creating networks. For example, now we have a lot of WhatsApp groups that deal with a particular value chain. You have one for goats, you have one for chicken. You have for it brings communities together. And when you have communities coming together, they share not only experiences, but markets, markets and uh, know-how. And, you know, sharing what they do, best practices. This has a way in improving the productivity. But the problem we have is only the young people 
who are in these groups mm. are accessing this. Yeah. How do we get it down to the rurals? Mm. That is now the challenge. Okay, so just pause on that. It's just unfortunate we have limited time, three mm. minutes, to make sure that we uh, uh, dig through these questions. But I think the message is being done. What I'm hearing, the, there has to be an investment into the ICT infrastructure, especially by the telecoms companies, and uh, there has to be uh, an appreciation of the technology itself. Now, uh, just going to Dr. Margaret Mangeni, a value chain expert. The, the, there was a loan amounting to over 2 billion shillings, which was dispersed to the company called Amos Diaries in Akegeti village, Nyaka Hita Parish in Nyakasura, uh, Nyakashashara. All right, I hope I'm getting that right. Sub county on 24th December 2014, at terms that were settled with Bank of Uganda requirements, 12% interest rate, five year loan period 2015 to 2020. Why am I reading this? One, I want to know how do we as a country attract increased investment in agricultural industrialization? We're talking about mechanization, um, modernization, making sure that you have everything systematically integrated with a technological touch. So how do you spur that? Uh, is this an example where the government is giving, is making some sort of uh, loan arrangements with uh, specific or individual farmers and perhaps other arrangements? Thank you very much, Baldwin. Uh, Investment in industry is really something that we need to think about very carefully. And like you've said, I want to say that this is not the first time that we are thinking about it when we look about at the Vision 2040. I think the starting point is really to benchmark internally what we have done so that we are able to learn lessons. I think if we are to make it going forward, we need to be a country that learns from the past. What are the success factors? What are the failure factors in the investments that we've had so far? because indeed investment has been there in industry and it's a lot of money so we can't afford to begin throwing it away without learning and reflecting and fine tuning. So I would say that the first point to start is to look at the lessons both from the local investments and the international investments and I think we need to change here because the main focus tends to be to look at the international investors. Those are the ones we consider investors. But I want to argue that the local investors, we also need to target them with strategies. And when we distill these lessons from the past, we are able to package them in a manner that can be used by other investors in future. My colleague has been sharing about communication and, and e-technologies. These are very crucial in terms of making the message, taking the message out there. That's how we attract people and really market the agricultural sector as the place to invest. I think that's the way to start. Okay, now one of the challenges is that because at times we bash government and we have no real, one of, there's an agricultural credit facility that has been issued, actually this particular, rather last year, 2015. Mm -hmm. Uganda shillings 243 billion had been dispersed to farmers cumulatively between 2009 and 30th June 2015, of which only Uganda shillings 188.6 billion, which is just 78%, was absorbed. A total of 318, rather 79% of the 401 loan applications that were received were funded. Now, you have money available by the public, uh, you know, governance uh, structure, the government itself. Mm -hmm. But people are not taking it in turn. How is this money just lost into obscurity and without any adaptability to its expected productive channels, especially for farming purposes? Actually, Baldwin, that makes my point even clearer. The fact that we set up these structures for you know, financing and we don't have in place mechanisms to track what's going on, mm -hmm. to really understand the root causes, for example, in that case of you know, low absorption, and if people absorb why, are, why they are not really transforming or transitioning out of poverty. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we need a serious strategy for learning because the challenge we have again, um, you know, not bashing government, we have a tendency to invest and then run away from investments before we have even understood why things went wrong and therefore using it as a you know, learning for the future. I think we need to get away from that because as I said from the beginning, industrialization is big money, big investment. Mm -hmm. So we really can't afford to be running away from investments just like that. We need to be harvesting lessons, fine tuning interventions and then moving forward. In a, in, a, in a more systematic and better manner. So, Doctor, who needs to work harder so that we have an efficient way of application of our resources, the financing that is there, making sure you direct the farmers to make the right decisions and the right actions to be productively efficient? To me, I think the private sector is there and they've been actually very responsive in this, in this country. But I would put the onus on government because government has a role to play in terms of really 
showing the direction that we should take as a country and making sure that there are efficient and effective systems of tracking our progress, you know, harvesting lessons, as I said in the beginning, and channeling them into future investments, mm -hmm. both for the public <coughs> sector mm -hmm. and the, for the private sector, for local investment mm -hmm. and for international investment okay. investors as Thank well. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fle. Just let me get back to Apollo. So we, we, uh, one of the other objectives of the 2040 vision are to accelerate, accelerate industrialization through upgrading and diversification to effectively harness local resources, offshoring industries and develop industrial clusters along value chains, make land reforms to facilitate faster acquisition of land for planned urbanization, infrastructure development, and agricultural commercialization, among other developments. So what do you advise our policymakers that should be the sequencing of agro-sector development priorities? Okay, because there's so many things. There is a diversity. Of, you have, of course, crop um, issues. You have animal issues. You have irrigation applications. So what should be like the number two or three things that you re request or advise the policy implementers here to deal with to make sure that we have a positive progression on the building of our growth economy? Uh, first of all, I think the issue of uh, creating local markets for our produce. What has been done now by the Minister of Agriculture is we have a zoning mechanism, a mechanism, and we know where what needs to be planted where. The next thing, logically, that should be done is to create market for the produce that should be produced in that area. How is that done? Looking for uh, the intubation model that I, I, I always endeavor to champion is put value addition facilities in the clusters that are within these uh, production areas for those particular crops. For example, the farmers in uh, the Elgon region that grow coffee need to have a full range of value addition equipment for coffee in that area. That can be managed centrally as an uh, intubation hub that can attract and add value to the produce that coming out of that area. The same you can do for the cattle corridor. Put a big infrastructure for uh, 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 diary value addition in the cattle corridor so that the farmer has less than 100 kilometers to deliver his, his milk at a direct price. That way you're going to increase your productivity tremendously and also increase the, the income of the farmers. Mm -hmm. They have a ready market yes, I just and they have a production center. Availability of markets. So yes. second, because we need to second have is the solution-centric discussion. The, yes. the irrigation factor. Okay. We need to start, we should not have started the, with productivity, uh, I mean increasing productivity by supplying seeds. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's important, especially for those areas that don't have, that don't have a cash crop. Mm -hmm. But I think availing the basic means of irrigating our crop Mm. is number one. And this we can start with rainwater harvesting. There are very simple kits that can harvest our water and get it to the farm. Mm -hmm. what, rainwater can be harvested right at the farm and applied to the crop right next to where it's harvested. Why don't we come up with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the kits that are required and supply them as we supply the seedlings and have these guys a source of water to make sure the seedlings that are supplied actually grow. Mm -hmm. These are very simple and cheap things to do because you only need tarpaulins to do this. The farmer will dig the hole, you supply him with the right tarpaulin and a cover and a, and a, 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 a bit of training on how to, to drain the water into the, the particular channel mm -hmm. and then you have some irrigation. Okay, then three. you are sure your yeah. seeds are going okay. to grow. Market so irrigation three. Any third one? Oh, that's what we need to pause on. Over. For now, we can okay, pause on great. that. So let me get back to Dr. Margaret. Now, we have the, the government debt in the financial year 2014-15 stood at 34.7% of GDP. Mm. That's quite frightening. 34.7% mm. of our GDP is indebted. So Uganda Vision 2040 identifies key core projects that need to be started, including some you know, like, uh, large irrigation schemes, as he was talking about, for international airports, a standard gauge railway, oil refinery and associated pipeline infrastructure, mud lane paved national road network linking major towns, cities, and other strategic, and globally competitive skills development centers. Now, Madam Dr. Margaret, what kind of infrastructure amenities and enabling facilities can double or perhaps triple Uganda's agricultural production potential and contribution to our GDP? Because that's where the most, the big population of production is. One of the key areas that we need to focus on, I think, is mechanization. Because we cannot make the gains that we are planning to have with our handhold and with the drudgery that is now characterizing agriculture, the agriculture sector. We need to make sure that we invest in mechanization of all the labor-intensive activities on the farm, 
starting from plowing, planting, weeding, harvesting, post-harvest handling. And of course, I can't afford to forget the women who are actually the ones who shoulder the burden of the labor on the farms. We must make sure that we make life easy for our men and women who till the land to make sure that they are able, we are able to reap more optimization of labor, actually. I think that is very, very critical. I have nothing against investing in the Kira project where we are producing cars, but I think comparative advantage for Uganda, the priority should be really in mechanizing the agriculture sector mm -hmm. so that our farmers and other actors in the value chains have the equipment, the technology, the machinery that makes them, you know, produce much, much more than they are doing yeah, right but, now. Uh, but Dr. Margaret, unfortunately, uh, it, it just the, the assertion that you don't believe in the industrial attempts of automobile production mm -hmm. is quite not informed because mm -hmm. the vision actually itself gives us an anticipation that by 2040, we want to have industrialization stronger than agriculture, contributing 31.4% and agriculture uh, contributing 10.4% and services contributing 58.2%. If you read that particular national, rather the 2040 vision, but that, that's just to make sure that we balance Making the discussion. Yes, absolutely, because it's an industrialization. <laughs> sort of, but no problem. <laughs> okay. So if you're talking about infrastructure, our roads, because there's a complaint by the populace that the investment in roads, mm -hmm. in other sort of big uh, infrastructure projects, is not, is not worth the investment now. If it's in the vision and it's stating that we need to have a good road network, don't you, do you think the government is on the right track or do you think it needs to scale back down? I a think bit? government is on the right track. Okay. Roads are so critical actually for industrialization right. yeah. because you know, if you, you're to have an industry anywhere, it mm. must have a very good road. Mm. The road is where the you know, inputs for product to enhance production and services are all transported on that road. So, the government is right on track on okay, that one. Okay, so I agree allow with that. Me. Just a s 30 seconds, please. I need to transition to a different uh, platform. Yes. yes, I can't finish this conversation without emphasizing mm -hmm. the impact and effect of uh, effective intubation centers. Mm -hmm. Countries have transformed by investing money. What is an in intubation center, please? Is a one-stop center that guides an entrepreneur, an agro entrepreneur, from an from the start of his enterprise mm. to when the enterprise is actually moving. Mm. You get the technical support there, mm. you get the network, market, uh, market networks, you get the funding opportunities there, mm. and actually the facilities. Mm. Israel, South Africa is transforming and creating jobs for the youth using this kind of approach. Mm. This is an approach that I encourage and push our government to put money into to ensure that our youths get jobs that they can create themselves by starting agro-enterprises mm. and by putting money into that uh, this kind of model yeah. we can get the, the, the youth to get a job. Okay. Then. Thank you so much Apollo and thank you so much Dr. Margaret. We're going to have a break of this particular set and uh, we're going to now connect to Brian Mulondo and uh, and uh, we hopefully yeah I'm being told Brian Mulondo is not on so let me take the director's call and uh, we'll see how we transition from this platform. Thank you, our viewers, for keeping us as your number one station. This is NTV at 10. I'm Karagawa Baldwin.